How many push-ups must members be able to do if they're in prison? Casino crown? Specific hours for doing a certain drug? Even criminal organizations have strict rules. Here are the ones members of the Latin Kings must follow. Latin Kings Group developed between 1940 and 1960 in Chicago, Illinois, as a community to help lessen the impact of immigration. The initial network helped Latino immigrants to integrate into a new life by assisting with employment, finding housing, and offering practical advice, but also protecting against racial violence and police repression. With the arrival of hard drugs in Chicago during the mid-60s, the Latin Kings seized the opportunity and evolved into one of the most infamous controlled and dogmatic street gangs in America. The modern organizational structure of the gang was created on the basis of the Chicago Motherland chapter. In 1986, Luis Felipe, aka King Blood, established the Bloodline chapter in New York, positioning himself as the leader. Initially, the Bloodline chapter served as a protection mechanism for Latin people inside the prison system due to Felipe's own imprisonment. However, by the late 90s, the New York City branch became a highly formidable organization in its own right. The gang relies heavily on drug distribution. Its main motives are gaining power and protection from other gangs. It operates in great secrecy and strongly promotes violent culture. Drug trafficking, murder, robbery, and witness intimidation make up the bulk of the gang's illegal activities. Latin Kings gang members must follow the King's Manifesto that outlines their purpose and ideology called Kingism. Their belief system offers principles by which to live, with prayers, stages of enlightenment, and various rules and procedures. The manifesto instructs members to avoid criminal behavior when possible and strive towards a better society that ensures greater independence for their people. When a gang member accepts kingism and thus the manifesto, it's almost like they're being confirmed into a religion, promising to uphold truth, justice, peace, and freedom. The, the God ain't helping me, so I come to my nation to help me, you know, and my, and my nation is like a God to me, you know? That's why I follow by this nation. The members must read and fully understand any literature provided by the executive crown members. If there is any confusion, they must find a fellow member who can clarify it, and their literature is considered pretty sacred. The gang's rules demand that members must be prepared to engage in violence when necessary, even if that means beating up their fellow members. The Latin kings emphasize respect among members. Infighting isn't really allowed, and only high-ranking members can approve violent action between feuding parties. Such things as failing to share drug earnings with each other or disrespecting a higher-ranking member can be brought before a gang court and often very violent punishments are dealt out. Punishments for violating the rules include the 2 for 45 rule, where other group members beat a person for 45 seconds. If a member shares internal information, one could get a full body fledge, an act of standing against the wall while other members beat them for 2 minutes and 30 seconds. In some cases, a monetary fine is enough, but often the members are brutally beaten or even slain due to the gang's motto, a king never tastes death but once. Those who severely break the rules end up on beat down on site and terminate on site lists, meaning the hit list. The Latin Kings gang has a variety of rituals that members must participate in, from celebrating specific holidays to various gang signs they use. The gang's usage of gestures, prayers, and other means of communication and identification is highly particular and formalized. From kissing a crown before the supreme leader to how they cross their arms is all regulated. The gang also celebrates specific holidays such as January 6th or King's Holy Day when Latin kings are required to fast in honor of brothers and sisters who passed away. The first week of March is known as King's Week or the Latin King's Week of the Sun, which is the gang's annual anniversary celebration. And the last week of October is celebrated as the Week of Blood. The gang has a strict way of how meetings are conducted. At the beginning, the family prayer is recited followed by members throwing up the Amor del Rey sign. No one is allowed to speak at meetings without permission. If this rule is broken, the member must do 50 push-ups or stand in a push-up position for 10 or 20 minutes. The second warning is a one-minute beating in front of everyone. There is no third warning as per the rule book. Furthermore, meetings are obligatory and a member has to have a justified reason for being absent. Skipping meetings can lead to a violation, probation, and physical punishment. When a member is absent for the fourth time without a valid excuse, they are crown stripped or discharged from the organization. Even being only five minutes late to a meeting can have dire consequences. So, hey, come here, you, you know, you was five minutes late, it's okay, just stand here in the middle of the circle for one minute. The guy didn't walk out that circle, he was carried out. Everyone present at the meeting must pay the membership fee of $7 per meeting. Members are also not allowed to attend a meeting under the influence of anything that could disrupt its process. Despite the fact that the Latin Kings are heavily involved in the drug business across the country, there are strict rules when it comes to drug usage and abuse, but also selling. 
An important part of their constitution states that members can sell crack but can't use it. Also, they can only smoke weed during certain hours. PCP or angel dust is also out of the question. The Constitution also prohibits other illegal narcotics to be consumed or sold, like animal tranquilizers, glue, LSD or acid, heroin, and downers. As written by former gang member Raimundo Sanchez in My Bloody Life, it is often hard to not fall into addiction. This is due to the fact that drugs constantly surround the gang members. He describes an event from his past when he overdosed on cocaine and almost died, which put him in violation of the rules. They didn't care about me endangering my life with a coke habit. No, they were upset because I had broken the rules by becoming a junkie. Graffiti serves as an important part of communication between Latin King gang members as well as rivals. According to the New York Police Department, their graffiti helps mark their territory. However, at odds with such practices is the gang's constitutional rule that vandalism such as graffiti is, quote, strongly discouraged, likely due to their claims as a legitimate organization. In 2019, as reported by Michigan Live, a substantial rise in graffiti messages was noticed after a local gang leader was taken to prison in Holland, Michigan. Most of the new graffiti targeted the Holland police, threatening police officers, but also other gangs. Graffiti included HPDK, an acronym for Holland Police Department Killer, and a pitchfork turned upside down. They were signed ADR, which could stand for Amor de Rey, a well-known greeting of the group. Another rule more clearly states that all rival graffiti has to be removed. This is often done by writing over or adding to it. There are several ways to become a member of the group, but a new member must go through a proper initiation before gaining full membership. A new potential member has to prove himself to the gang first before he can be considered for going through the process of initiation. The Latin King's initiation packet cites morals, character, and cultural heritage as qualifications for prospective members. However, entrance into the gang is often based on less noble notions. Actions such as shooting a rival gang member are often used as part of the initiation process. After the proving phase, the real initiation takes place, with gang members taking their turns beating the initiate. The members doling out the beating are prohibited from striking any vulnerable areas or doing significant harm to the initiate. The practice is merely done to prove the toughness of the inductee. After the initiation beating, the inductee is given a notebook of rules and nation literature and is told to memorize a particular prayer until the next meeting. Most gang members feel that their membership is a lifetime subscription without any option for cancellation. King is a king for life. He dies under those colors. When a member is accepted to the group, they promise to be a Latin king for life according to the oath they must follow. The oath goes on to say that members stand behind one another for better or worse. While members are presumed lifetime members, they are always subject to having their loyalty tested. No member is beyond being tested, and if they don't pass, they could potentially be given a TOS or terminate on-site order, which allows any active Latin king to kill him on the spot. Though it may be a violent criminal organization, surprisingly, the gang actually promotes social responsibility. Members must set a good example to other gang members as well as in the Latino community in general. This means that members must be employed or at least looking for work. They must also attend school, show family responsibility, and be interested in Latino cultural history. The rules also prescribe continuous improvement of one's communication skills with the intention to educate future gang members. Members are specifically required to know their personal cultural history and family lineage. They must also maintain a positive outlook and make an effort to not overreact to minor issues. The King's Constitution consists of rules and practical advice for behavior in special circumstances, including how to act in prison. Members are instructed on the precise amount of exercise they should be doing while locked up. This includes running 2 miles in 20 minutes, being able to perform 500 push-ups, and performing 50 sit-ups in 2 minutes. They are also forbidden from interacting too closely with correctional staff and are told to essentially keep to themselves and observe quiet time. Keeping to themselves while in prison comes with a general distrust of the law. As per the NYPD, one of their rules dictates that no member should even think of relying on a law enforcement organization as a credible source of information, and another prohibits police cooperation. If you or anyone you know is struggling with addiction issues, help is available. Visit the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration website or contact SAMHSA's National Helpline at 1-800-662-HELP-4357.